Welcome to the course Manufacturing Processes 2. Now we are going through module 4 that is general purpose machine tools and now lecture 4.5 mounting of jobs and cutting tools in machine tools. This will be taken in two uh, parts part A and part B. Today in this lecture we shall cover part A. In the next lecture we shall cover part B because it is a bigger course. Now the specific instructional objectives as a whole of this lecture material. This will enable the students state the principles and conditional requirements of mounting jobs and tools in machine tools. Now here you see that <coughs> the performance of machining system is very much affected by or indirectly you can say that the perfection of mounting of job and the tool play very important role on the perfect perfection of uh, the working of the machining system. Therefore, if you want very good machining performance from the system, then the cutting tools and job have to be mounted very carefully, judiciously, methodically and accurately. Now this part A state the principles and conditional requirements of mounting jobs and tools in machine tools. These conditions have to be fulfilled to get good performance for the machining system. This course will also enable this lecture illustrate how the jobs and tools are mounted in different machine tools like lathes, drilling machines. Now up to lathes and drilling machines will be covered in this lecture. In the next lecture will, co will be covered part B shaping, planing and slotting machines like reciprocating machines, milling machines and grinding machines. Then next day it will also cover point out requirements and show methods of mounting jobs and tools in CNC machine tools because CNC machine tools are coming up in a large way because these are the machine tools of future. So how jobs and tools should be mounted with a special care in CNC machine tools like milling machine or machining center have also to be learned. So, Today we shall cover point number one, the state the principles and conditional requirements of mounting job and tool in machine tools and illustrate in detail how the jobs and tools are mounted in lathes, central lathe and uh, other lathes say semi automatic and automatic lathes and then drilling machines. The remaining part will be covered in the next one lecture, one hour lecture. Now, the principles and essential requirements of mounting jobs and cutting tools in different machine tools. This is the topic and it is very important because they play a vital role on the performance of the machining system. First, the principles and requirements of mounting jobs in machine tools. What are the condition requirements and the principles? Appropriate selection of work holding system. So, there are various types of jobs and their holding methods in machine tools by chuck, by collet, by clamps, by jig fixture and lot of methods are there. Now this has to be selected very carefully. Now depending upon the selection will depend upon type and configuration of the machine tool. So the mounting method in lathe is different from the mounting of job in say shaping machine. So what kind of machine tool you are thinking of that has to be kept in mind. Shape, size and material of the blank. If the shape is very regular, simple, geometrical, then one kind like vice will be appropriate. If it is very odd shape, then a different method. If the size is very large, a different method of mounting has to be adopted. And the material also, if the material is very strong, rigid, very safe, you can mount in any method. But if it is very fragile or say 
not very strong, then extra care has to be taken. Kind of machining work, what kind of machining work you are doing? Is it drilling or it is turning or it is shaping, milling? Depending on that, the method of mounting of the job will vary. Now, the volume of production. Now, volume of production in respect of production volume, you know there are four categories, piece production or job order production. Maybe only one or two pieces may be manufactured. Then batch production, say 10 to 20 or say 50 pieces are to be manufactured, that is called batch production. Then comes lot production, little, little bigger size. Now, lot production again may be three categories, say, say small lot production, medium size production, medium lot production and large lot production. So, the job mounting method will be widely different and if it is a mass production method, say quantity, large quantity method, then the method of holding will be different. Now, the job holding method will also depend upon proper locating, supporting and clamping has to be assured. So, it has to be job will be mounted in such a way that the essential requirements like locating, supporting and clamping have to be done, easy and quick loading and unloading. The job mounting method should be such that the mounting in the machine tool can be done easily and quickly as well as after machining the job can be removed easily and quickly. This thing have to be taken care of. Proper alignments of the jobs with respect to the machine tool, with respect to the cutting tool. For example, the top surface of a job to be machine has to be either horizontal or vertical or it has to be coaxial with the spindle axis or it has to be concentric in nature etcetera. We should also see that uninterrupted flow of chips and cutting fluid, mounting of the job as well as the tool should be done in such a way machine tool that do not hamper the flow of chips and uh, the disposal of chips and a cutting fluid flow. All these points have to be borne in mind when you select and adopt the method of mounting of job in a particular machine tool. Similarly, principles and requirements of mounting tools, cutting tools, what are those factors? First of all, appropriate selection of the tool holder. Now, the cutting tool may be very tiny, it has to be held in a tool holder, all right. Now, this holder has to be properly selected and methods of mounting of the holder into, into the machine tool, proper positioning and orientation of the tool. Now, the tool has got some important factor called geometry. Now, if the tool is not properly placed, say if it is by mistake put upside down a turning tool, it will not work at all. So, the positioning of the tool and orientation of the cutting tool are very important which has to be taken care of during mounting the cutting tools and this have to be done depending upon the type of the tool, size of the cutting tool and shape of the cutting tools. Quick and accurate locating, yes, if the suppose the cutting tool is a drilling operation the drill has to be fitted into the drilling spindle. Now, this has the spindle has got an axis and job the tool is also the fit in such a way they rotate coaxially, concentrically and coaxially, all right. So, first of all the quickly quick and accurate locating of the tool into the spindle, strong support so that it does not become loose and rigid clamping so that under the cutting forces the tool does not come out or get displaced minimum run out and chance of deflection. So, it should be so rigidly held and correctly that there should not be any run out kind of thing. If it is this can be run out in one way or it can be run out like this if not properly mounted and then deflection. If it is not rigidly held at the tip then due to the cutting force the tool may deflect and that will affect the quality of production. Easy and quick mounting and change. Now, the cutting tool should be such mounted that it can be easily done without much effort and very simple any unskilled worker can also do that and sometime for doing the job we need change of the tool, cutting tool say a small drill has to be replaced by a bigger drill, a bigger drill has to be replaced by a boring tool, boring tool by a reamer and so on. The mounting method should be such that this change of the tool can be done very easily accurately unobstructed flow of chips and cutting fluid. Yes, while mounting the tool or selecting the method of mounting, here also you should remember that the chips flow and cutting fluid flow should not be uh, interrupted. Now, come to methods of mounting job and cutting tools 
in general purpose machine tools. Now, this will be in detail, the second part, the exact methods. First of all, let us consider job and tool mounting in lathes. All right. Now, you know there are different types of lathes. It is categorized in different way, general purpose lathe, single purpose lathe or multi-purpose lathe or special purpose lathe, non-automatic lathe, automatic lathe, semi-automatic lathe, single spindle lathe, multi spindle lathe. There are different types. Okay. So, space is limited. Most important and widely used are central lathes. Now, let us see how job and tool mounted in central lathes. Now, first mounting of job. Now, when you say job, it can also be called work, work piece work piece, job, blank, they all mean same. Now, what are the general methods of mounting job in center lathe? Now, this can be done again in a center lathe, you know, there is a head stock on the left hand side and there is a tail stock on the other side and the job is mounted either in the head stock and there can be support from the tail stock end also. If the job is long and large and heavy, some support is necessary depending upon the configuration, shape and weight or volume of the workpiece. Now, first let us consider that mounting of job in lathe, central lathe without additional support from tail stock. Yes, job will be simply mounted in the head stock without any support from the tail stock. Chucks, most common. Now, when you say chuck, there are two types of chuck basically. There are many types, but most widely used common are three jaw self centering chuck. Four independent jaw chuck. Another method is face plate. Now, face on the face plate, on the plate, the jaw will be clamped. It can be clamped directly or through a fixture, additional fixture. This will be shown later on. Now, here you see the mounting of jobs in central lathe continuation. This is the chuck, this three jaw chuck. You see, this is the workpiece. This is the workpiece which is mounted into the chuck, and there are three jaws one, two, and three. And three jaws they work radially. Now, this is the true picture this is the workpiece, this is the one jaw, second jaw, third jaw, three jaws like this. Now, this is gripped into the three jaws. Now, this is called self centering, three jaw self centering chuck because when this scroll, there is a scroll called radial thread is disc which has got an Archimedes spiral slot continuous which is also called radial thread. Okay. Now, here it is like this. Suppose there is a an Archimedes spiral scroll in a disc cut and now if there be a jaw like this, this jaw has got rack at the back. These are the jaws and now the job is held. When this disc is rotated in this direction, then all the jaws will move radially inside because these spirals are an Archimedes spiral. So, the rotation of this spiral will either bring these jaws concentrically towards the axis or away from the axis and all the three jaws will work simultaneously. Now, this is the disc here shown here and this disc has got gear, bevel gear at the back side which is operated by another small bevel gear. So, if you rotate this bevel gear, this disc will rotate and because of that, these three jaws will move simultaneously either towards the center or away from center and this is how the jaw will be gripped. So, this is the method. Okay. Now, next is four jaw chuck. Now, one thing you have to remember then in these three jaws, since all these three jaws are moving simultaneously the strength of the grip is not that big. And secondly, the surface on which the job, the grips will be made by the jaws should be pre-machined. So, the where the jaws will act that should be pre-machined. So, that when the jaws move together, they grip perfectly. Even then, the grip strength is not adequate, not very strong. For light work, light jobs, you can do this. But when we need very strong grip, especially the job surface is not regular, it is not even circular, it may be a square, it may be rectangle, it may be hexagon and the job is very irregular and the grip has to be very strong. Then this four jaw, this four jaw independent, independent four jaw chuck is used. Now, there see there are four jaws, this is one jaw, another jaw, third, fourth. So, this is one, two, three, 
four, four jaws and all the jaws are moved separately individually all right and then you can grip this job it will be held center at the center by operating these uh, screws now this is the suppose this is a screw okay and this is the nut now i can remove the half of the nut so only the upper portion will remain even only this part will remain and remaining all the parts will be thrown out so what remains is this is the screw and this is the nut only a sector a nut sector and this one has got shape like this and there is a rack sorry and this is the uh, this is the screw and this is the nut okay and this is the screw on this side and this is the nut that is the jaw so this is thread and this is called this has got rack when this will be rotated about the axis this will move this way or this way just like a knot this is how all the four jaws are made to move forward towards the center or away from the center by rotating the screw clockwise or anti clockwise this gives very strong grip for irregular jobs all right now this is face plate these plates are very large plates these plates are very large okay large large plates which has got number of slots radial slots radial slot or circumferential slots as shown over there and there can be jaws also on this plate is a large plate the odd shaped jaw will be mounted here you see a connecting rod odd shape which is clamped on this face plate now this face plate will be fitted into the spindle so when the spindle rotates this face plate will rotate along with that the job will rotate now you can do some work here this is the job okay now you can do drilling boring similar work and this these are the clamps now if the job is small and regular shape and you have to produce say, say 20 pieces in batch production so this is the work piece this is difficult to mount so you can take help of a fixture of course this is very simple fixture it is a plate like it can be a complicated fixture also on the fixture this job will be mounted easily and the fixture will be clamped on the face plate and this is the dead weight you know for balancing purpose because this is a heavy on this side if you do not put any dead weight so there will be centric force all right. So this is the face plate so on the face plate job can be mounted either directly by clamps or with the help of a fixture and this is done when you produce a number of pieces identical pieces that is called batch production. Now, method of mounting of job cutting tools in general now <coughs> uh, without additional support this is over next yes job mounting with tail stock support yes this is suppose the job is long a long heavy job. So, if you grip it here by chuck then this will be so long and cantilever beam and you do cutting action from this side so the force will act so this is a chance of bending or you know opening or this will be disclamped so there should be an additional support from this side and this additional support by a center which will fit it into the tail stock okay and just like this look at here job mounting with tail stock supports in center legs what are the methods in between centers now this is the center what is the center center they look like this a tapered rod so this is fitted on this side either in the spindle or on the tail stock which is got the taper board in the taper board the taper shank is fitted and the other end is also tapered and a job is fitted here this has got a hole and this gives a support you see here these are supports given here these are supports like that here now this is the workpiece which is mounted this is another center 
Now, this center is called life center which rotates along with the spindle and this center is fitted with a quill and quill is fitted into the tail stock and so this is dead center. Now, the rod is fitted now this has to rotate what is done on this spindle a plate is fixed this is called driving plate all right driving plate on the driving plate there is a slot like and this is called a lathe dog or catcher this is called lathe dog you see. So, this job will be mounted here mounted here and then this end will be fitted here. So, when this will, this will rotate this will rotate the job also along to this catcher or lathe dog. So, the job is made to rotate by this driving plate which is fitted into the spindle and this is the dead center. So, this is very common type of support and this is the cutting tool which gives you know rotate move in this direction or in this direction. So, this job is held here and here life center at the head stock and dead center at the tail stock and this is called lathe dog. Now, this center are of different types this is normal center. So, this end of the job will have a hole this will have a hole here taper hole into the taper hole this pin will be fitted as shown over here ok or this can be if you want to face this surface then this is called half center and this is a ball shaped. Now, sometimes we want say taper turning or for other purpose job need to be fixed in inclined plane with respect to the main axis and then this ball type ball end type center is very useful. And now here this is called revolving center this is a special type revolving center what is that? I told you that in this is called dead center which does not rotate the job rotates, but the center does not rotate as a result as a result what happens lot of friction takes place at the surface rubbing. So, both the job and the center undergoes wear and tear because of the relative movement this is rotating this is not rotating. Now, if we can make the center also to rotate with the same speed. So, there will be no relative movement and sliding. So, this revolving center this part of the center is fitted into the tail stock and the front portion that is fitted into this with the help of bearing thrust bearing and taper under bearing. So, because of the job is mounted here with the force. So, along with the job rotation the center will also rotate inside. So, there will be no relative bend. So, this is called revolving center this is used for heavy job especially where this wear and tear should be avoided revolving center. So, this is how this job can be supported. Now, again in between chuck and center. So, if the job is very rugged now suppose here you have, you have seen the job is very simple rod like. Now, in this case the job may be very large in diameter or step may be little irregular. So, this side it has to be gripped by chuck and this side by center this is in between in between chuck and center. Now, in between head stock and tail stock with additional support this will be discussed shortly ok. All these things we shall discuss now. Here you see that this is the job held in between a three jaw chuck this is a three jaw chuck three jaw chuck self centering chuck and this is a revolving center this is a revolving center and this is a cutting tool. Now, of course, this job is small this can be very large job also here you can see a large job may be say 100 kilogram weight one quintal held in a chuck on one side may be four jaw or like three jaw on the other side there is a revolving center. So, in between chuck and tail stock center. So, this is three job for lighter job and four job for heavier job and irregular shape. Now, the last one as I told that using a rest when we machine a very long rod say a feed rod or a lead screw. So, we grip here and we grip here if we machine straight way because of the force the job will undergo bending. So, prevent the bending there is a support given additional support is given and this additional support can be stationary in one place or this support can move along with the tool. If it remains stationary in a position then this will be called stationary rest ok steady rest 
and if this rest follows along with the tool, then this will be called follower rest. One example is shown over here, you see this one. This job, this is the job a slender rod, maybe a feed rod, which has to be turned straight. This is the cutting tool mounted and this is the tail stock and head stock, driving plate and this is the catcher, lathe dog. So, this is the steady rest. Okay? So, this is giving one additional support here in between the center. So, that under the action of the force, this will not bend. Of course, this center can be tied with this tool post and then this tool and this one will move simultaneously. Of course, then the gap will be much less tool and the support will be very close. So, this is the job. If this will be the job, then this is the cutting tool and the support will be also close to that and this support and the tool will move simultaneously. This is called steady rest. Now, let us see the next Uh, here, this is done. Something wrong. So, next is mounting of cutting tools in center lathes. Continuation. So long we have discussed about the mounting of the job in center lathes. Now, we shall discuss about mounting of cutting tools in center lathes. Now, the general systems, the different types of cutting tools used in machine tool. Some tool is circular type, some tool is shank type, some tool is drill type, rod like, some tool is a small piece or insert like. So, depending upon the type of the tools, the holding method will be also different. It also differ from machine to machine. Then say first let us discuss about say general the mounting counting the central lathes. Okay. What are general systems? high speed steel tools, shank type and that will be placed in tool post. Now, this is the turning tool with a long shank, this is called turning tool. So, this is the turning tool portion and this is called shank portion. This kind of cutting tool, turning tool which is very common, turning tool, grooving tool and different types of tools with a shank, these are all single point tool, high speed steel tool, shank type, this will be placed in tool post. What is tool post? This is an example of tool post. This tool post, this is compound slide mounted on the cross slide which is mounted on the carriage and this is the tool post where the cutting tool, this is the cutting tool, this is the cutting tool all right, fitted into the tool post here and that is mounted on the compound slide. Compound slide is resting on the cross slide, cross slide on the saddle, saddle on the carriage, entire carriage moves along the lathe bed. So, this is tool post. Now, this is single for single tool at a time. High speed steel form tools in tool post. Now, this is as before that, let me show you another kind of tool post. This is another tool post where 1, 2, 3, another. So, this in this tool post you can mount one tool here, one tool there, one tool there, one tool there. So, four tools and by rotating or what is called indexing or rotating, you can bring suppose this is the job and by rotating you can bring this tool in position, this tool in position and this tool in position. So, four tools can be mounted. So, this is wide more versatile tool post. Now, another high speed steel form tools in tool post. 
Now, form tools you remember that if the tool is like this, you want to cut a groove like this, the form tool. This will produce a groove like this, a job, a groove will be formed like this. Say so, thread cutting tool, you produce thread. This is called thread cutting tool is also, is also a form tool. Say we want to produce a thread like this. So, this job will rotate and this is the cutting tool, single point cutting tool, this can be a two point cutting tool, two points, now to multi points cutting tool, these are called form tools. It can be rounded also for different forms or groups. Now, this, this is one example, high speed steel form tool, this is one example, this is the form tool, a circular type form tool, this is the cutting point and this is a rake angle and clearance angle are given, uh, rake angle and clearance angle and these are mounted on this disc type cutting tool is mounted on a lever, a frame and that is mounted on a tool holder, a large tool holder like this, a large tool holder and that is mounted into the tool post somewhere here or here. So, this is the form tool. Next is carbide and ceramic inserts in tool holders, drills and reamers in tailstock wheels, boring tools in tool post and tailstock. This will shown later on. The next phase. Now, tool mounting in central lace is a continuation, mounting of tool inserts. Now, tool inserts, you know nowadays carbide tools, carbide tools, ceramic tool and a CBN and different types of tools are used. Those are used in the form of inserts, say square insert, very small square inserts with a hole or without a hole and it can be like this, all right. And these are made of carbide and after using the corners, all the four corners, maybe on the other side also, more four corners, eight corners, this will be thrown out. It can be triangular, different types of inserts are available. Now, the how this inserts will be mounted, this is a cutting tool, now this has to be mounted. There are four different methods are there. One method is shown here, this is the really cutting tool insert, that square shape without hole, there is no hole, all right. This is mounted here. and this is mounted in this is called tool holder. This tool holder has a groove. On the groove, there is a support, a seam. On the seam, this, this tool insert is placed, and then there is a clamp. The clamp is pressed hard by a screw, all right. So, it is held rigidly. Another method, this is the tool inserts, okay. This is the tool inserts. It is a hollow. To the hole, there is a lever, L shaped lever, and when by this screw, you move this lever this side down then this end will push this insert against the wall and this bit will be held tightly in the position. Now, this is another version. This is the tool bit, okay. this tool bit and this is there is a hole as shown over here, this through the hole there is a pin. In addition to that, there is a clamp. So, the clamp is pressed to hold this bit by a force and is operated by a screw, a screw. So, this gives a locating pin as well as clamping. Now, another method where this hole is tapered, this hole existing in the insert is tapered. Okay. Now, so this is a tapered, so when this pin is rotated, so this will grip this insert on the seat of the tool holder, this is the tool holder, it is a long tool holder. So, this is how the tools are mounted. Now, next is mounting drill. You know, sometimes we need some drilling operation at this question. This is the rod, this is the rod where a hole has to be made. Okay. This is the rod in which a hole has to be made here, axial hole. So, this is the small drill, 
drill is held in the drill chuck, drill chuck is fitted into the quill, quill of the tail stock, this is a tail stock. So, within the tail stock there is a quill, within the quill there is a taper hole, within taper hole the taper shank drill chuck is fitted into the drill chuck small drill is fitted and the drill will now moved along with this tail stock and make this hole. So, this is a mounting of drill. So, the rotary the circular tools axisymmetric tools like drill, center drill, reamer, sometimes boring tool are fitted into the tail stock. So, tail stock of a center lathe is used not only for supporting the job giving a support, but these are also used to hold some kind of cutting tools like drills, center drill and so on. Now, tool mounting in central lathe continuation, mounting boring tool. You know what is boring again? Boring means enlarging holes. Suppose there is a rod, there is a job held in a chuck and it has been drilled first, but you want to enlarge the hole. Then by a boring tool, you have to enlarge the hole. This will be boring tool, the hole will be enlarged gradually by rotational job this move this tool will move in this direction and the job will be removed from the surface boring tool. So, the boring tool moves axially. Now, in turn boring operation means enlargement of hole and finishing of a hole, but in case of drill in sorry in case of lathe when you do it in lathe the job rotates always lathe machine tools lathe are always characterized by rotation of the job and translation or feed of the tool. But if the same operation is done in drilling machine or boring machine, the tool will rotate, job will remain stationary. Anyway, so this is the boring tool, a shank type boring tool. So, what is to be done? This boring tool has to be mounted into the tool post. This is the tool post which is mounted on the saddle and then this will be pushed gradually inside while the job will be rotating and when it goes inside, it removes, it cuts the material in this fashion. Again, I am showing you this is the job, and there is a hole drilled. Suppose a blind hole that is a drill or pre machine prepared by casting or somehow in the previous process, and then now you operate a drill. So, drill will move along this path as a result, that diameter will gradually increase by removing this material. So, boring operation not only enlarges, it gives very good finish, dimensional accuracy, and you can get very good finish. Now, in case of very precision work, precision boring, sometimes this boring tool, this is the boring tool, okay, this is the boring tool, which has got a taper shank, which is fitted into the tail stock, and this is long slender rod like. So, the other end in the spindle, there is a bush fitted inside. So, inside the bush, this end of the boring tool is fitted, and this is the work piece, this is the work piece which is fitted into the chuck. So, the spindle rotates along with the job, but this boring tool fitted into the tail stock does not rotate. So, the job is rotating, but the tool remains fixed. So, the tool moves in this direction and it enlarges the hole and it gives very good finish. So, this is done for very precision machining where the tool requires additional support from this end. So, this is another method. mounting of job and tools in semi automatic and automatic lathes. As I told you that lathes are of different type, various type. We are not covering all those things, all those machine lathes are uh, that is not possible in such short time, but most widely used are center lathes and then we shall discuss little bit about mounting of job in some semi, some semi automatic and automatic lathe. Now, semi automatic lathe example capstan lathe, turret lathe, relieving lathe, say hydraulic lathe copying lathe and so on, but we shall confine our discussion with capstan lathe and turret lathe. Now, automatic lathes may be cutting off lathe, switch type automatic lathe, single spindle automatic lathe, multi spindle screw cutting lathe and so on. 
we shall discuss some of them. Mounting of jobs first, okay. jobs or blanks in semi-automatic machines, automatic and semi-automatic machine tools. Now, how these are now, what are the characteristics of semi-automatic or, or automatic machine tools? What is the purpose of ma ma making machine tool automatic? Purpose is, the purpose of automation is to get the work done easily, quickly, that is rapidly and accurately, consistently with minimum or no human intervention. That is the purpose of automation. So, automation is a device or system which enables very quick, accurate and uh, reliable, rigid clamping, unclamping, mounting or handling operations of machine uh, in machine tools like mounting and unmounting or unloading of jobs, mounting tool and remove the tool and movement of the tool. These are the various handling operations which need to be automated. So, quick acting, accurate and acting, repetitive acting or these are the features of automatic and semi-automatic machine tools. Now, mounting of job or blanks, chucking and bar type jobs are held by Coventry chuck. Coventry chuck is a three jaw chuck no doubt, but all the jaws are activated, operated not by rotating this uh, pinion or bevel gear which takes little time. Here a little movement either pneumatically actuated or hydraulically operated or mechanically operated, a ring will be made to rotate little bit and that will enable all the three jaws move simultaneously okay? and with a small amount of rotation because it is a lot production, repetitive production. So, the, uh, the jobs are more or less same within a range. So, the job need not move with a wide range of say very from large gap to low gap because same jobs are repeatedly done. So, job has to be opened, the jaws have to be opened slightly and move has to move. So, slight movement of the jaws will be enough and that amount of movement will be accomplished by a ring, a cam ring. So, all the three jaws will move radially by this cam ring. So, quick acting and accurate acting and repeatability are the characteristics of automation pneumatically and hydraulically operated chuck where the three jaws or four jaws will be operated very quickly by compressed air or by hydraulic force. Quick acting soft jaw chucks. Now, is there certain materials jobs which require suppose this is a job rod where some work has to be done here suppose some here. Now, the job has to be turned this side. So, this end will come this side already machine and now you have to machine this side. Now, if you grip this side by a strong chuck or grip then this surface will be damaged. In that case the jaws have to be softer even at least softer than the work material. This is called quick and this have to be soft as well as quick acting. Quick acting soft jaw chucks this is another kind of chuck. Now, next is collet chucks which are very very widely used. Now, remember this Coventry chuck pneumatic chuck and quick acting soft jaw chuck, these are mostly used these three in semi-automatic lathes like turret lathe and copying uh, capstan lathe, turret lathe, but collet chucks these are mostly used in automatic machine tools and but this can be used in these are all used in say uh, capstan lathe also, not turret lathe, but capstan lathe because capstan lathe or turret lathe they deal with rod like job which need to be mounted in collet chuck or they deal with the sort of turret lathe capstan lathe with the chucking type say this type job where they are held in chuck, but quick acting chucks. But automatic machine tools they say they always deal with bar type, long bar type those are held always in collet chucks. So, collet chucks are used normally for regular section, but a regular section means either perfect axis symmetrical either cylindrical or it has to be square or it has to be hexagonal or it has to be octagonal and so on. This is called regular okay, like this. Now, we shall discuss like this thing in detail. Now, these are the collets. Chucks you have already seen three jaw chuck, four jaw chuck and Coventry chuck and other chucks are more or less similar. You can see concern lot of books are there and you can see into the machines also, but collets which are widely used mostly in automatic machine tools are also used in semi automatic like capstan lathe. These have to be learnt in detail. Now, how do they work? 
chuck, collet chuck, this is a spring collet chuck is basically a tube. It is basically a tube. Okay. And now in the, the tube at the one the free end, the tubes are slotted, okay, slitted, just like the finger, the gap between the finger. Now, if we apply a radial force from there, then this grip will be closer, okay. This will be closer. So, if you put something inside, that will be grip. That means this spring collet, which has got three or four fingers produced by slits, cutting slits, have to be moved, you apply a radial force, okay and then they will be closing and grip the job. So, with the collets are spring type in nature, spring action and they have got fingers produced by slots and by applying radial force, they are made to close, come closer and with a small gripping hole and they grip the job held inside. And while releasing, this radial force has to be withdrawn and they will go out and job will be coming out. So, this is the basic principle. Now, here you see this is the collet. Okay. This is the collet, this is the collet and this is the workpiece. The workpiece is held into the collet. Now, there the one finger, two finger, three finger and these fingers are produced by cutting slits here. So, when you apply radial force, then this will move inside and grip it. But there are three, basically three types of collets. What are those? This is the push type. This is a one push type. That here you see that all these collets they are called slits like this radial slits up to certain length axial slits to make three fingers one two three here is the four fingers three fingers are there. Now the question is the difference lies in how this will be made to close down or how the radial force has to be applied. In this case, in this case, this is the spindle. The spindle has got a taper hole and this collet is pushed from this side. The collet is tapered like this. It is not like that, it is like this, it is wrong one. Uh, this should be, oh sorry, this one is, this is actually push type here, you see this end. This end of the taper end comes into the taper end when you push it. So, there will be a force acting radially and that will make this fingers going closer to the axis and if you put a job here, that will be gripped. So, this is push type. Now, this one is pull type, this one. Here, you put it like this, this is the spindle, this spindle has got a taper opening outside, this is the opening inside, you see, opening inside is opening outside. Now, the quality which is pulled in this direction, so this will be pulled against this one. So, a force will act, which has got a radial component that will make these fingers close down and if you put a job inside, that will be gripped. Now, the push and pull makes little movement of the job because of the movement of the collet. So, collet moves slightly in this direction, in this direction because of this push or pull. As a result, the job also moves slightly which may not be allowed in some occasion <coughs> where this push and pull will not be allowed. This is one example. So, this is called stationary type. This is a stationary type where this also a taper surface. This end is flat, is arrested by this plate fitted into the spindle. Now, by a tube, by a tube, this is a tube, extra tube, which will be pushed. The collet will be not directly pushed or pulled, but this, there will be tube, the tube will be pushed, which will apply force on the taper surface. So, this will apply a force in this direction, that will have a radial component and this will move in this direction, this will move in this direction and grip the job. So, this is how the collets work in automatic machine tool. Now, mounting of cutting tools in semi-automatic lathes, capstan lathe and turret lathe and so on. First, let us discuss with semi-automatic lathes like capstan lathe, the turret lathe and so on. On cross light, now in semi-automatic lathes, suppose this is the job. this is a job held in a chuck or collet. So, there will be a tool, this is called front slide, which will move in this direction, rear slide and there will be one hexagonal turret. And this will have a tool, how many tools? Six tools will be mounted on the six faces. And time to time, these cutting tools move only radially. So, they are used only for radial work, say which require radial feed like 
say facing, grooving, forming, recessing, parting and so on. And these tools we have mounted on the turret, turret moves axially. So, turning, drilling, boring, rimming, this thread cutting, this kind of tools will be mounted on the hexagonal turret. So, how many tools we can mount in the semi-automatic? Mind that in semi-automatic machine tools, time has to be saved by automation. So, mount lot of tools. Now, this is the turret, hexagonal turret, you see, hexagonal turret, which has got number of tools mounted. This is the job, ring type job, which is held here and this is the turret. And this is the another turret, which is called, this rotates about hexagonal, this is a different drum type. The drum type one rotates about this tool comes into action, then this tool come into action because of the rotation, all the tools will come. And this is a real picture, this is actual turret of a turret lathe and this is a work piece. So, by indexing motion, the appropriate tool will come and do the necessary action. So, in cross slide, on cross slide for transverse feed, this two, in front slide, this is the front slide, this can be a one tool type or a indexable type where four tools can be mounted. In rear slide, only one for parting operation. So, in the radial one, the four, five cutting tools can be mounted. On the turret, mostly hexagonal, six cutting tools. So, six plus five, eleven cutting tools can be mounted. Now, mounting of tools in automatic lathes. In automatic lathes, it is the job is mounted in the collet. Now, here you see that this is the job, a rod like fitted into the collet. All right, it is a wrong rod like. And then this is the job, this is the job. And now these are the tools, these are the tools front slide, rear slide, these are vertical slide, and two angular slide. So, five cutting tools move radially to cut the job for various machining operations. In addition to that, there is a hexagonal turret, or this may be assumed to be an hexagonal, hexagonal turret, where like this the tools are mounted, different tools are mounted and then after machining work, this will go back and then it will rotate, indexing it will again come back. This is how the tools are mounted. These are the different types of tools are mounted. Radially moving tools and this is actually moving tools in turret. Now, mounting of job and tools in drilling machines, mounting of jobs. General methods, what are general methods in drilling machines? Direct clamping on the drilling machine bed. Now, sorry, mounting of the job first. How the jobs are mounted? Very simple. In drilling machine, direct clamping on the drilling machine bed by clamps, nut, bolt, T, T bolt, etcetera, or this is applied for large and odd shaped jobs. If the job is small and uh, irregular shape, then a vice can be mounted on the bed on the vice, the jobs will be fitted. Or sometime for batch production, a special jig will be developed or used, which will be clamped on the lathe bed and job will be mounted into the jig. And now, let us show you the direct clamping on the bed. So, this is the bed and the job is here and by clamping from this side, the job is here. Now, you can do the drilling operation. These are the different types of vice. Here you see that this is the drill bit, okay. this is the job, this is the job. This job is mounted into the vice, this is the vice, okay. into the vice the job is mounted and this is the drill bit and the drill is mounted in the drill chaff that is fitted into the spindle. So, mounting of job <coughs> now into the vice, this is also this is the job mounted onto the vice and this drill is fitted directly to the spindle with a socket. There are different types of vice, this is called general types of vice, simple vice, one dimensional, this is a vice which can rotate about this axis is called swiveling vice and this is called universal vice, where the vice can, this is the vice mounted on a table which can allow rotate about this axis and there is another vice which can make it rotate further. So, this is called universal vice. So, you mount the job and you can rotate this one fix it at different orientations. Mounting a job in jig and fixture, if the job is to produced in some batches, batch production, then sometime a jig plate, 
this is a jig plate this is the machine bit this is the machine bit on that this is the jig this is the entire this is a jig which is the mount on the bit and this is the bush and this is the drill bit coming and this is the work piece mounted inside after drilling this will be taken out after unclamping this one so this is how it is done in batch production mounting of tools in drilling machines very simple as i already told that drills are mounted in drill chuck for small drills for small drills and straight shank type the drills are fitted into the drill chuck as i showed earlier this is a drill chuck here and by opening this chuck has got taper shank that is fitted into the spindle which has got taper bore and this is a drill bit so for small drills and say taper shank drill sorry straight shank drill this is fitted into the chuck and chuck is fitted into this for in spindle bore for taper shank drills now the drills are got taper shank drills okay this is a drill bit they are got taper shank these are for used for large drills but the grip was large grip gripping force these are fitted directly into this spindle and now this bore of the machine may be larger than the taper shank in that case another socket an adapter is put in is called adapter or socket which has got internal taper to accommodate the taper shank of the drill and external taper to be fitted into the taper bore of the spindle so these are the sockets you see these are the various size of the sockets various size of sockets and which are fitted into the taper shank of the drill that is fitted into the spindle this is the example now solid carbide drills mounting of carbide drills now carbide drills may be solid type carbide drills may be solid type small drills these are held in chuck brace these are the small if it is a small it is called a straight shank this can be held in a chuck braced tip type spade drill now in this, this type of drill say spade drill only the front portion of the, this is steel but this front portion will be carbide braced tip type and this will be placed this will be fit into chuck straight shank drills or direct into this carbide insert these are the carbide inserts which are mechanically clamped at the tip so these are carbide inserts which are fitted these are widely used so today is this much so next part of the lecture will be covered in the next part next day in the next lecture okay thank you Thank you.